Alright, so far I have gotten three requests for eye patches, not many, that's good, and it's what I expected. I have one of them already finished, it's the one I made for this how-to. <coughs> now, I am going to be honouring the statement I made on Twitter, I will be making eye patches for anyone who requests them. However, I am here in Ireland, so me doing it just by myself is not going to be very efficient. What I think would work better is if there are many makers across the entire United States at the moment, because that's where they're going to be most needed, but also across the world who are equipped to do this, to make a safe, comfortable, pleasing eye patch. Now, this isn't like the PPE situation because catastrophic eye injuries are quite rare. However, because they are quite rare, the resources for dealing with them are often inadequate. They are usually either uncomfortable, um, unsafe, or not pleasing. Costume eye patches are usually either uncomfortable or unsafe. Medical eye patches are usually either uncomfortable or not great for long-term use. The ones that are designed for long-term use tend to be very aesthetically displeasing. Oh. This is a problem for the monocular vision community as a whole, all the time, but it is going to especially be a problem when we have police brutality going on on such a wide scale. The main safety concern with making an eye patch is that you cannot have pressure on the eyeball itself. You're, the eye must be able to be open the person wearing the eye patch must be able to blink freely and comfortably. My eye is open under this patch currently. In fact, if I cover my good eye, I can see the back of my eye patch, kind of. Um, otherwise, if I don't have my good eye covered, my uh, brain just kind of tunes out the bad eye while it's patched. If there is pressure on the eyeball itself, that can lead to further injury it can lead to an awful lot of pain and discomfort. So make sure to avoid that. It should sit on the eyebrow and the cheekbone like a pair of goggles would. It is very, very difficult to properly film something that you are making. So I have also included a write-up on how to do this. There is a link to it in the description of this video. Most experienced makers will now have, having watched this far, will now have enough information to carry on. Anyone else, you can keep watching. Everyone, please take a look at the instructions linked in the video description. I'm going to hand you over to past me making this eye patch. Okay, so this is my little eye patch kit. All the stuff I use, materials I use for making eye patches. Uh, yeah, you can see all what I usually use for the the rigid core of the patch itself is spare lenses from sports glasses. They work really, really well. They're the right shape. They have the convex curve that keeps the patch from going directly against your eyeball. It's good. And that is a nylon dog collar that I usually may use for making the straps with. So I'm cutting the front and back panels out of the sleeve from an old leather jacket. This is the same sleeve that I cut the front, back, front and back panels from my own current two eye patches from. Now I'm marking out the edge of the front panel there, no the back panel rather, you want to make the lines on the back panel quite thick. You want the back panel to be slightly larger than the front panel. So what I do is I mark out the lines on the back panel very thick and I cut outside the lines. You can see I don't really use exact measurements or anything. I'm a very kind of instinctive crafter. Other people will do this differently. That's fine. 
And then when you go to do the front panel, just flip the back panel over, trace around that, and yeah, just cut on the inside of the line for the front panel. So that's cut outside the line on the back panel, inside the line on the front panel. You need that very slight slot you need that very slight size difference, and I'll explain why a little bit later. So I'm just punching in the stitching holes here. I'm using a proper like five prong stitching punch. I occasionally switch to a three prong prong one for smaller areas, but you don't need to use that. the The tool I used to use for this up until about a year ago was literally a thick sewing needle with some plumber's putty around it as a handle. Use whatever you have, it's fine. Just as long as you can poke regular holes. This is just sewing the two panels together. I'm not gonna be spending much time on this. You know what sewing looks like. But when you're about halfway done, you slip your rigid core into it and then keep sewing. One thing that you do need to do though, is at one point, skip two stitches. Make sure you've skipped two holes at some point along the edge of your rigid core. Not into the tabs that you attach the strap to, but along the edge of whatever you're using as the rigid core. Again, I'll explain that a little bit later. So the patch itself is almost done, but there is one problem. When you stretch the leather, when you stretch out the two tabs for the straps, the back panel bulges and that will press against the eye. This is why you left out those two stitches. This is why you skipped two stitches. You can also see why we made the back panel slightly larger than the front panel. It's so the stitches get pulled forward and won't be held against your face. So you're gonna need some glue here. I usually use super glue because it's a very thin glue. But as long as you're using some kind of glue with a, a very narrow nozzle on the tube, that's fine. You stick it in where those two st stitches were skipped. You push it in between the rigid core, whatever you're using for that, and the back panel. The panel that will be facing into the eye. You put it in there, you glue that down so that it stops bulging when you stretch it out. All right, for some reason I'm missing this bit of footage for doing the strap, but look, it's it's fine. You take a nylon dog collar, one of the ones with a, a side squeeze clip. Excuse me. That kind of clip. Nylon dog collar, one of those clips. You loosen it until it's at its maximum size, cut it in half, Use a soldering iron to poke a hole in one end of each part. Use a leather punch to put a hole in the tabs on each side of the eye patch. Rivet it together, you're done. That's an eye patch. You can see the eye patch is done. It fits, it feels quite comfortable. That's it, it's, it's literally that simple. It's a very, very simple job. A couple of things before I let you go. Um, a person shouldn't wear an eye patch for extended periods unless they know from a doctor that the affected eye, the the vision in the in the affected eye, is not correctable. By which I mean, if you've been told by a doctor that glasses will not help your vision, that contact lenses and the like will not help your vision, then and only then should you think about wearing an eye patch regularly. Um, otherwise, using the eye patch for extended periods will basically, the less you use your eye, the weaker its vision will get. So, don't compromise your vision unless it's already fucked. My eye is bad because of a disease called keratoconus, which warps the cornea of my eye into a cone shape. 
Now, at early stages, it's easy enough to correct with contact lenses, but mine came on very rapidly. So by the time it was diagnosed, it was already too far along to correct that way. It might be possible to correct it with a cornea transplant, but I cannot afford that. <laughs> um, so yeah. Yeah, just, just only use an iPad for extended periods if you're in a similar situation to that.